Okay, welcome to Parker Automotive. Today, this is that 2017 Impala um, with a 3.6. It had a heater core, or it had an um, expansion. Uh, evaporator eva core. Yeah, evaporator core, I'm sorry, I'm a little tired. So, uh, it had an evaporator core leak. How we found it, now this is air box. I took it all Look, apart. It's you had to take the heater core out in your defense. There you but go. I have to take mm -hmm. everything out. So, this is where it's actually leaking from on the evaporator core. And show it up close to the camera. Okay. Now is there a hole? We can't see a hole, ah. but probably from icing or whatever, it's you know, it leaked right there. So anyway, and this is how it goes on the inside. Um, like you can see in this box, if you want to look, I don't know, I think you might be able to see it, but you see the, where it's been leaking. Oh, uh, well, yeah, I can see you it. You can see the yellow. The green okay so now this is in a condensation tube which this tube right here connects to it and that's how we discovered that it was leaking in there oh yeah line. refer to our other video where it shows you under the car right 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 it's actually inside of the the, the uh, uni body part of the frame it leaks through there so that's how we discovered it now um, uh, that being said there's this car it does have if you have shop key or or all data, it shows you a procedure, but this procedure is not in there. It shows you that you can take the top of this apart and then you slide the evaporator core out. You can't, it's all one piece basically, and it's all gotta come apart and go back together. If you wanna step over, I'll show you on the inside. I'm gonna say this, if you're not an experienced technician, do yeah. not take on this job. Yeah, it's, uh, here's in the back seat, just some of the items that all have to come apart. Uh, I mean, it literally every piece got to come off, and every piece is very tedious. <laughs> this is the bar that goes across. You do got it. It says to take out the steering wheel, but if you lay it in such a manner, you know, straighten your wheels always sort of straight ahead, you should be okay. Uh, come on over here. I don't think I've ever seen an evaporator replace evaporator core replacement Not in that. my life being broke down all the way to the. Factory subframe, yeah. almost so, insane. This, this is actually the dash itself. So, and that here, said it came out in right. It said pieces. it comes out in pieces, but honestly, it doesn't. You're better off taking it all apart in one piece. Now, the reason why you have to take the speakers out on the ends is because of the wire harness. The wires are attached to it. Um, this also has an airbag on the passenger side that is part of the dash so if you if you were to be able to take the dash up you wouldn't be able to get the airbag out because you can see it's got the special connectors this harness goes down in the back it's going to be a pain in the bush to fish it out but and it here's just happen. some other components that's the radio center console right, how many say can i add um we were not able to find any youtube videos on wow, this man. uh fix and i'm it's gonna say even... we'll be the first right it won't be <laughs> It won't be, uh, well, actually, uh, we're not going to video how to take it out, but I'm going to show you nah. some players. Okay, so this right here is the radio. The radio screen itself, it has a cover that goes over top of it, and then this piece, which bolts, goes into here. These two screws, you have to take this off in order to get to the two screws to take the whole radio out. It was... It's got little tiny screws. You're going to have to be very, very... Oh, yeah, we put them in an envelope it's right. in that very box. Little tiny screws and clips. So if you're going to do this, I'm going to be real honest. Uh, yesterday I started around 11 o'clock. Um, uh, we left out of here around 6, but I probably spent three hours just trying to find research or even a depiction. I'm sure the dealer has, has a little bit better but any any <clears throat> okay so the, the descriptions and th that they have in order to take this dash apart are for a sub model like the base model not the one with the fully know, this, up uh what do they call it the fully loaded yeah the fully loaded this is like more so some of the um the procedures you might want to get from like a cadillac cts um, because that has the same type of radio and the same type of dash. So you want to go with those depictions opposed to unless you work as a dealer. So um, I'm going to uh, 
I'm going to leave it at that. This is a difficult job. We'll just pause it and come back for yeah, other things. Yeah, we'll try it. Pausing right. it. Okay, so we're back. I just want to let you see after it's all put back together. Um, that is basically what it's going to look like. Um, the heater core is the one over here with the two separate. Uh, I would suggest that you clock these in. You clear, uh, cover them up because if you don't, you're going to leak coolant on the inside of the vehicle. But like you can see, for the most part, it is all one piece. There is a bottom vent that goes on the bottom, which we'll, I'll hook that on in a minute, but it's getting ready to go in. All right. I pulled down. You're on. Oh, okay, so we're, we're trying our best to make these videos. It is a little tedious. We don't have like, a really great camera, but I'm going to have her show you. It's not I just cool. unpaused it. It's not a new video. Oh, okay, so. All right. Well, anyway, um, we're not uh, done yet, but this I'll, go, is I'll walk to the other side. As we put the interior cabin uh, back yeah, together. Yeah. All right, it just, the worst is now, and hopefully, if somebody else does this, they're going to say, you know, there is a console, the whole console goes in here, and then these wires will have to be associated with, you know, uh, their points of contact. So now, now I'm going to have to figure out. Plug everything back in, yeah. and I'm just going to pause it, and then we'll come back. Okay. Uh, keep your progress going. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So we're coming back real quick. I almost got the interior. Well, no, no, I don't. But anyway, uh, I'm going to show you some of the things you might want when you're going to do it that uh, doesn't show up on the schematics or the procedures. So down in here, if you look down here, I'll put it on the pointer. You see right here where I'm pointing this down? Can you see my finger? No. No. Okay, so can you see where the light is right there? No. Probably not, right? Nope. Okay, well anyway, let me let me raise this and put it on low. Okay, so it's actually right if yeah, you can see it. Come over this way, let me see. Um afraid to touch anything too much or we may uh, stop the video. Right. <laughs> So anyway, right behind the throttle body, let's pull that back so we can show. So right behind the throttle body, you will have to take all this out anyway uh, to get to the low pressure line, which is right here. Uh, yep. So you just take that off anyway. Down towards where the, the, uh, the, the high pressure line or the low pressure line runs in, the liquid line, right up underneath of there, there's a 10 millimeter bolt, which um, you oh, might- Oh, maybe I see it. Yeah. It's it's right, yep. yeah, okay, so a 10 millimeter bolt, which bolts into the back of the housing, the heater box housing. That right there, make sure you get. It's um, it's a little bit difficult to get to, but you can get to it. It's, it's hard to see, but anyway, so you know the general area. Okay, now over on this side, to make things a lot easier, this is back here is going to be your heater core which is right where my hand is, and then your evaporator core. That's where your connections are. You can see them. Okay, good. So in order to get back there, easy access. This is a fuel line right here that I'm touching. That's a fuel line. This is, an, this is the evap bling, or well, it's a brake booster airline. It's better to disconnect them so you don't put no stress on it. In order for that to come off, you have a bracket right here. You just disconnect it and take these off. It just uh, saves you some time because right here is an, a cooler line or a, a coolant line, which runs over to the box, uh, to the uh, uh, the reservoir. You got to be careful because if you bend on that, you could break it. So I usually just take both of the screws off that hold it down and just let it run freely. This way, you're not putting no tension on it or pulling it by accident. Okay, we're gonna go into the car real quick and I'm just gonna give you, show you something that you might wanna think about when you're doing it. Okay, so the, the bits back together uh, for the most part, I still gotta do the wiring and everything, but there's, when you're taking all this apart, this right here is part of the console that goes in here. There's bracket bolts that hold this together that hold up the, the main support that goes across. There's another bolt that you might not 
be able to notice. You got to make sure you take it off is right here or else it won't come off and you'll pry on it. You might break it. I'm going to go over to the other side so I can show you another thing you want to pay attention to. You see, this has got an aftermarket remote start. They have a um, grounding wire up top. It broke. Make sure whenever you're doing any of this, before you put it all back together, you check every wire that you're going into so you know if you, got, you don't want to have to put it all back together and then find out that it doesn't start. Or that you know, remote doesn't work. And I'm going to try my best throughout the, um, this video show you the, the more difficult things. Right down here, right down here, there's a there's a bolt right here that holds the housing right by the blower motor, apart onto the bracket itself. This the it's a 10 millimeter bolt, but this is a nut. I actually I don't know why they would do it, but the screw is on the inside. So what you're going to have to do is you actually got to reach up underneath of here and put a a socket with an extension on it. It's a quarter inch and then you can get to it, but it's in a pretty weird place. So don't, the thing is, is if you don't get to it and you try to yank this out, you'll actually break that air box. You know, you'll put yourself in a whole bunch of, there's a lot of other things that I'm going to show you, like for the, the, the radio to get the, the whole component out. There's actually a screw that's up underneath. And the only way to get to those screws is to take the top of the radio off. Uh, it doesn't show it in the procedure for this vehicle because it's basically that's similar as the Cadillac CTS with the with the um, movable screen that will comes up into the air. That's basically what that is. It's like a six din or something like a four din radio screen. But um, okay, so we're gonna pause it and then when I get we'll to be this, back. We'll be back. Okay, so um, we're going to finish this video up because there's a lot more involved. Mm -hmm. But I am going to tell you uh, what's going to make it easier for you, what I do anyway, is um, I already uh, <laughs> purged the system, the cooling system. Uh, I drained out, I think, a, a gallon and um, a half, a gallon and a half. Um, after I was done purging it, I used uh, two little bit over two gallons, so um, it was probably, uh, it was either low, I don't, I, I'll get there, I'm done, I'll end up checking and see if there's a leak anywhere, but this vehicle was a, um, it was about a gallon and a quart low, it, it holds, uh, right, almost, almost two and a half gallons, right, total, almost two gallons in. Oh, okay, yeah, so, um, right, let's see, yeah, about, about, but anyway, um, and I also did a leak test. I, I charged the system um, using the machine. I did that because I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to put it all back together and then check for leaks and find a leak anyway. Oh, did it pass the vacuum? Yes, it passed the vacuum and it charged. Um, and then on the initial test, it failed the vacuum? Yes, it failed. Okay. And that's because it was the evaporator fluid was leaking through it. Do we ever show it by the way out? Yeah, on our first video, not this video. So you can look for our... We did a uh, diagnosis video. So what we had was we didn't have that in the yet. Right. So, but um, I can show it to you where we can just finish. I'm sorry for being... Well, you can look for our first diagnostic video on this. It's called 2017 Evaporator Core, how we diagnosed the problem. And then this is the actual uh, repair. Right. And uh, the repair... I'm going to don't do it. some tips. <laughs> um, don't follow the, the shop key or all data. Go by instinct. Um, switch in between. The Take CTS. photos right. as Take you go along for reference. Um, I'm going to show you something so you can see. Prior to taking this out, it comes out basically in one piece. You can, it shows that you can take the soft uh, well, you showed off. this in the very beginning of this video, just right, so you know. Okay, so, well, anyway, I was looking at it again, and you don't want to pull it off. It's just, it'll be, it's gonna, it's a little bit harder putting all the wires back in with it together like this, but it's, in the long run, it's gonna be a lot easier, and you're gonna, you're not gonna make a mistake. It, you know, there's more, every time you pop a pin, 
you crack the plastic. So, you know. Um, I'm gonna show. Things. I'm gonna show a little tip, and I'm just gonna say uh, this is a big job. A lot of stuff comes off. A lot of stuff has to go back. Wiring has to be put back correctly. I will make a suggestion and say as you take stuff off document it with some paint markers where it goes or take some photos so you can go back for reference because this is such a long job um, it gives you 13.2 hours if this is the first time you've ever done it you've never done it before it's clearly going to take you more than 13 hours so you're going to take it off in a day and you're going to put it back together the next day so the next day when your brain's fried as a technician because it's so in-depth take photos and make references to make your job easier there's my tip use ink pens and everything else that you can so that you can delegate what wires go where. Um, uh, so okay. You can even mark your little bolts. Yeah, mark. well you can, but for the most part, I'll tell you the truth, this is the first time I ever did a dash where almost 90% of the bolts are all exactly the same. Oh, but sweet. Yeah, so, you, you know, there's no mismatch and um, there's a couple smaller ones for the steering column cover stuff like that but for the most part they're all the same size they're all seven millimeter and um so yeah and there's way too many of them there's way too many <laughs> right. so um i just ended with uh god bless you god bless america and stay safe